knows. He knows I'm great. That's why he's scared that fate has brought us together. He's scared that my great and his great can't gravitate simultaneously towards success in a mutually creative space. He's scared that providence has dished him provisions from nurturing soil like those good, good ground provisions his mama would boil to grow him strong and sturdy. See, he grew up in a home, broken. Where masculine roles were few and plenty, where he had no model of what a man should be, yet was repeatedly told that he was being bred to be a good man. Yes, I said he grew up in a home, broken. Where masculine roles were few and plenty, where he had no model of what a man should be, yet was repeatedly told that he was being bred to be a good man. One that would know how to treat a woman. Yes, he grew up in a home where upon leaving he came to question whether his voice had been somewhat castrated by this girl tribe of powerful women. Because it wasn't until he came to be a man, stepped out on his own to figure his life plans that he grew to understand that sensitivity meant fragility in a world of men disconnected from themselves and emotion. Desperately trying to amass physical strength through borrowed histories of Cajun minds and piercing tongues of female counterparts with branks. Call me Frank. And let's address how distressing it is to know that we're cultivating our boys to grow to think that every muscle of their vessel must battle an unnecessary power struggle with the female tongue. Imitating cultural teachings of medieval Europeans battling the term gentleman with cloaks of machismo. Unbeknown that mental and spiritual health are what kings are made of. And so he labored with the notion that, even as a man, there was some superior to him who could earn residual incomes from his land yet still feed him rations. And the only history the system taught him was one where his flesh had been picked on and beaten for centuries when there was so much greatness in his story. Yes, he came to understand that this world is run by man and that some wave ownership claims so great upon woman, house and land that they walk around heavy sacked and loaded ready to shoot slam dunk exploding semen into any fertile soil they were going. Or some limp impotently with no ink in their pen to erect fair legislation. And their only proclamation of what makes them men is to sit in the company of friends and attribute monetary validation to the sack that lets the biggest screw loose. I say, I bet. The stories get their heads wet with trippy ideas on how to keep their woman, house and land in check. Because let's face it, Insecurity and crazy are cheaper provisions to feed their lady Sold to them by media moguls as household commodities Leaving us in microcosms of pain Where queens feel unworthy and counteract with faces down, asses up Wearing boys to fight in their defense Only for them to be backed up against walls with their hands up True stories For these are the works of blasphemers who call themselves masters Now don't get my words twisted For worthy are those who attempt to transform centuries of pain into fuel to rebuild our houses and strength and maintain families. Worthy are those able to distinguish a princess through her discomfort at the prodding pee under imposed mattresses of social distress. Yes, they size the pain down to the pee in the hope that we will make light of the plight that we face daily. Yes, worthy is the man who grows in compassion and sensibility for the wounds that create men. And he was one of them. Yet being overwhelmed by society's placement, he stepped out in confused chaos and found a voice that was void of the authenticity of the original model that he was bred to be. A catalyst of change no longer, he shriveled under the weight of the responsibility of being the shepherd and leading men, of saving humanity. Trodden on somewhat lopsided on the wrong side of balance with sacks of freight and a staff filled with lead too heavy to filter and articulate the teachings of the matriarchal foundations on which he was raised. Notably ignoring the nurturing from tender breasts which were his plate. Yet, if it remains his innate desire to free willy to roam free willingly, who am I to judge what is presumably the nature of man, right? Yet I stand, a little bent but not broken, bruised but outspoken, basking in the opulence of queenly character, I widely flourish amidst weeds of social mess, and yes, in my strength I resiliently remind him of that tribe called She from whence he came, 
and I encourage him to learn himself and his wealth, and so he knows I'm great. And though it is not him that I blame, he continues to make mistakes, fervently scared to be vilified like the rest, for he knows that greatness leaves little room for mediocrity or conformity. He's scared of his own great ability and petrified of the pressure of continuously having to match the best of me because he knows I am great.